Taka 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 to the Hungary time stages one and two. The unofficial Sprinters U23 World Championships. We've got Olav Koy here, the 19-year-old for Jumbo Visma, Caden Groves, Jordi Mayus, Dainese. We're going to take a look at these first two stages. We've got power overlays as well. Let's get into stage one from Siofok to Capo 173 Ks. The only climb of note is with 47 Ks done, 2.5 Ks at 5.4%. That shouldn't even worry Jakub Moreshko, who's here as well. It's not a technical finale at all. I mean, they take a look at the finish line for the first time with 17 Ks to go. There's a non threatening breakaway who were just going for the intermediate sprint points pretty much. They had a 30 second lead on the peloton. So this was a nailed on bunch sprint. As I said, we've got Jakob Moreshko, the king of Asia here for Vini Zabu. And other experienced sprinters here include Phil Bauhaus for Bahrain Victorious. He's probably the best sprinter here, as well as Timothy Dupont. He won a stage at Etoile du Passage earlier this year. And Pierre Barbier for Israel Startup Nation. The last turn was with 1K to go. That's the last corner they'll do. It's pretty much a straight run in and a flat finish on a wide road. The most straightforward bunch sprint I've just about seen this year. It was Jumbo Visma doing the lead out duties early on. Turn Turnison is here. They've got Rick, Mick, and Mike doing leadouts for Olav Koy. So Mike Turnison, he's won a Tour de France sprint stage, and yet he's doing the leadout. You can see him third wheel. Bahrain probably have the strongest leadout with Marcel Seberg, Heinrich Hausler, and Fred Wright, who's been very good. I think Fred Wright might have even been doing last man duties for Phil Bauhaus. Hausler is currently marking the wheel, I think, of Phil Bauhaus, despite not doing the leadout. And we're about to see the cost of bad positioning for Caden Groves. You can see how deep he is here. He is going to have to do his first sprint before the true sprint even starts, doing 1,000, 1,100 watt peak, whilst all the main contenders for this stage, Bauhaus, Mareshko, Koi, Maus, Dainese, are in this bunch in the first five wheels with 450 meters to go. So that's really going to cost Caden Groves, and he's going to have to jump super early. You can't see it with this camera angle, but he's already jumping if you look at the power data on the left-hand side of the road, whilst Maus is getting a lead out from turns, and this is going to be perfect for Phil Bauhaus. The right-hand side of the road opens up. He's able to jump to the right of Barbier and Dupont, start his sprint later than pretty much everyone else, and Jakob Moreshko manages to surf his wheel to the line. So the more experienced sprinters had their way, Dupont, Moreshko, Bauhaus, and Pierre Barbier in this stage one, the most straightforward of the sprints. You can see here, Olaf Koy kind of gets pinched by Moreshko on the left-hand side. That checks his action when he's pr probably trying to follow Bauhaus. I mean, Bauhaus was the wheel to follow, but because he moves to the right-hand side and Barbier loses his wheel, it's all over, and Bauhaus probably is the quickest man here anyway. Groves had been sprinting for far too long on the right-hand side, eating wind for over 200 metres. So score one to Phil Bauhaus, the big German who won GC at Saudi Tour, I think, in 2020, somewhat controversially ahead of Nasser Bawani. Olav Koy looking okay. We didn't really see what he can do. He did win a stage in Seti Manakopi Bartoli last year uh, ahead of Ethan Hayter. We know how good Ethan Hayter is. Seeing him at Volta Argave, he is absolutely class, that lad. And I think Koy is really good as well. I mean, Mike Turnison wouldn't be leading out for him if they didn't back him. Caden Gross heart rate seems to be quite high, 205, peaking at almost 215 beats per minute. And he certainly does have the legs to win one of these stages, I think. It's just positioning has cost him in stages one and two. Particularly in stage one, the power he did for 25 to 30 seconds was very good. But he's just coming from far too deep. A time for stage two of Tour de Hungary. Another sprint stage from Balaton Fured to Naji Kanitsa. 183 kilometers long. A little bit more climbing in the first half of the stage. 3Ks at 5%, 2Ks at 5.3%, and a slightly uphill finish. Not pancake flat more technical as well. Three 90 degree turns through roundabouts in the last 1800 meters or so. It was raining at the start of the stage, just like it was on stage one. You can see Seberg and Moreshko all rugged up as they're in the neutral zone. And let me know down below in the comments, have you cycled through Hungary? I mean, I think the cycling culture is starting to build up there. Attila Volta just took the Maglia Rosa in the Giro d'Italia. Is it a nice place to cycle? I'm keen to check it out when I get to Europe. 19 k's to go, a slightly more threatening break this time, but still, this was going to be a nailed on sprint stage. All the World Tour teams, the majority of them have a sprinter here. And I wonder what the local teams and organizers think. I mean, when they put the parkour as almost four of these five 
stages in Tour de Hungary are going to be sprint stages and all the World Tour teams come with their sprinters, it doesn't really leave much of a chance for the local teams or even the Pro Conti teams. And this was the last main break attempt, it had a minute advantage with 17 k's to go. Alexander Kamp is actually quite quick for Trek Sigafredo in that group. Jumbo Visma tried losing the wheel in the run-in just to make it difficult for Astana, who I think might be leading up for Martinelli. That was closed down and it was going to be a straightforward sprint once again. Bahrain coming up with Hausler, then with Fred Wright as the last lead-out man for Phil Bauhaus. He's in the yellow jersey because he's leading the race quite deep this stage, and that's going to affect his final sprint. Mike Turnison launches pretty early given this uphill drag, but Coy is in good position. He's fourth wheel, he's got turns on his left-hand side, Jordi Mayus and Dainese behind him, and it's Groves and Bauhaus once again who were too deep, and that's going to ruin their sprints in this stage too. We're already into the last 250 metres, and yes, it's an uphill drag, but not that steep. And Olav Koy jumps a little bit early and to the right-hand side, the same time as Caden Groves. Whereas Jordi Mayus, just like Bauhaus on stage one, He's able to come out of the draft the latest. He's able to do his five-second peak with 100, 125 metres to go and clean up this stage with Dainese and Bauhaus launching late. We're going to need to look at the overhead to really see what happened in this stage, but a big win for the 22-year-old Jordi Mayus. But let's take a look at the overhead with about 400 metres to go. The last lead-out man for Bauhaus pulls off. Actually, I can't see shit. I'm going to have to zoom this in. Sorry. You can see Mayo's fourth wheel with the option to either follow the Trek rider on the left-hand side or Olaf Koy to the right-hand side. Dupont is on his left. Mayo's is going to beat him to the Trek rider's wheel. And you see Bauhaus in this yellow jersey with Groves. They're very, very deep once again, and Dupont's not going to be quick enough to follow Mayo's wheel. Koy is going to jump to the right-hand side quite early, and he gets significant separation from the group. He's going much quicker than turns. The problem is he runs out of steam, and Mayo's is able to start sprinting at this point when Koy's already been sprinting for four to five seconds. Hits the front at the perfect time, and Bauhaus was blocked on the right-hand side. He was probably the quickest coming late. So, Victory now for the under-23 riders in Stage 2, and they had four of the top five riders in this stage. Coy, Dainese, Maus, and Caden Groves. And Jordi Maus is a big lad. He's not able to do sort of the hilly, climby, sprinty stages. Even the stage Sagan one in Catalonia, he couldn't do the lead-up to Matera, but he looks very quick in a flat sprint, winning ahead of Dainese, Bauhaus, Olav Coy, and Caden Groves. We've got another sprint stage tomorrow, it looks like on stage three from Vesprem to Tata, 142 k's, and then the mountain stage is on stage four before the criterium stage finishing in Budapest on stage five. But I hope you enjoyed this video and the power data overlays as well. But I hope you well, and I'll see you tomorrow with the highlights of stage three. Ciao.